I'm Gideon from the Burning Veil podcast, and you are listening to the Infinite Rabbit Hole. Keep it up, guys. You're doing a great job. to the infinite rabbit hole i am your host jeremy and today we have the boss man he's here you don't know who he is yet but i do and so does jacob jake how you doing man i'm doing well dude i'm uh somewhat bummed out i keep ordering these motorcycle parts and not all of them fit so it's just a big pain in the butt but other than that i'm good ready to have a conversation with boss man and then hey if you're listening to this episode it means we weren't fired so that's true yeah. that's very true we'll see <laughs> how it turns out after this episode though because yeah. we might not you know we're not gonna even get into that but i see you're you're back at home man yeah. yeah yeah i spent a week with you and uh and now i'm back home lucky all right let's go to the guy who didn't spend a week with me jeffrey how are you uh, yes, I'm good, man. Um, I'm a little jealous. I saw you guys hanging out and I was like, man, I want to come hang out too. But I spent the weekend hanging out with my dad, who I haven't seen in a long time, riding a mm. boat on a lake and barbecuing and drinking beer. So I think it was too cold for you, to be honest. Probably like anything below 70 is too cold for me. So, oh, yeah, yeah it was, no, it was like screw. 65 and nope. then it plummeted down and then it started snowing on us and then nope. it bumped back up to 60 and then <laughs> dropped to 50 again as well nope. yeah me and uh me and jacob here we were out in the middle of the woods doing some squatching and uh it was yeah. cold and wet and oh man you would have you would have just hated it no nah, yeah. i'm good I'm, i'll be at the command center you use radio back to me that's how this works <laughs> bigfoot okay i got it out uh go. <laughs> kid hello Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm exhausted. Uh oh. Long day of work it, or it was a long week. I over the on Sunday, late on Sunday, I got back from Alberta. My big sister got married. It was a very long week and a lot of flying and a lot of not sleeping, and I'm still recovering. <laughs> Half the crew traveled in the last week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we're all back. All right. Let's move along because we know that you're not here to listen to us. You guys do that all the time. You guys want to hear the new voice, the boss voice, the man, the myth, the legend. Jason Hewlett. What's up, dude? How you doing? Hey, guys. How's it going? Oh, it's going. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're all you're all tired and ready to go to bed is what it sounds like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just got off 13 hours of work, man. I'm ready to roll. Let's do this. Awesome. Sh- no, thanks for having me on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So who is Jason Hewlett to us? You know what, Jason? Who are you to the infinite rabbit hole? <laughs> um, I'm the guy that uh, sought you guys out because we were looking for a video podcast to come on the paranormal network there at Joe Blow. And uh, it was suggested by Phantom Phil. Ah, and, and the, did I the other legend. Yes. Shout out to Phil. Phil's Phil's good people. I'm actually talking to Phil later this week. Um, on a, back going back on a show. Um, nice. Love Phil. And yeah, he suggested and he gave me Jeremy's contact. So I reached out to Jeremy and Jeremy and I had a chat about it. And then all of us sat down and had a chat about it. And I think it was like two weeks later, you guys were on the Paranormal Network with your first video podcast. And that was like already 14 weeks ago, something like that. Something like that. Nobody's it counting is. here. I Dude, mean, time early flies. Summer. <laughs> time flies. It's crazy. It sure does. I mean, it's not so. Yeah, that's and so I my job on, at, on the network is I'm like the showrunner for all the programming. Basically, I approve all the scripts and the edits and put the shows together and make sure they get up on time. But I also do a few of my own shows on on the network as well. So, you know, we want to believe hunting the haunted and narrating the UFO show. So that kind of keeps me busy. I'm I'm someone 
Jeez, it's always been, I have a background in journalism. Like I was a, a newspaper reporter for 10 years, crime reporter. Oh, yeah. I have a degree in film and a lifelong interest in the paranormal. And I've hit a point in my life where I was finally been able to take all those skill sets and interests and just put them together into one, one thing that somehow has become a job. And I'm not really sure how. And I'm still <laughs> not sure how I feel about that. Because <laughs> so, so, I have well, no more hobbies now. So, so you hate it now. Good, good. <laughs> long story short, this guy is responsible for you having to listen to us every week. And not and just listen, our, but watch, our watch, ugly watch, mugs. watch, watch. Sorry, you're right. He, he's the one who puts our ugly mugs on YouTube. Uh, you poor it story sounds world. Like, <laughs> sounds like a lot of work to me, man. Because you know, this pod, just from this podcast, right? And then another one, another two that I mean, like that's already so much work to me. And then thinking about how you have to, you know, manage on some level, however many shows there are on the network. Like I don't know, it just seems like a lot of work. Is it, it as much as it feels like to me? It, it, it like it is and it is like it's fun i mean it, it's it's paranormal content right because we've got shows that kind of cover off everything from bigfoot to ufos to ghosts you know to, to myths and urban legends and all that i think in total it's like a good five or six shows and usually there's one or two a week coming out sometimes three sometimes four if we bring in interviews right um and so it's managing that so it's it's a lot but it's fun it's all stuff i'm fascinated with like you guys you guys wouldn't sit here and talk every week you know before you even came on our network because if you didn't like it and weren't interested in it and didn't want to put the time in. So it's just kind of become this thing that I didn't plan or anticipate on, but was given the opportunity to do. So I jumped on it because, you know, you only get a chance like that, like once in a lifetime, really. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's sort of true. Jeff's here. Cause he has a crush on me, but uh, <laughs> Ken's are Jake and myself. I mean, we love this stuff for sure. Absolutely. Jeff just loves me. You got it. <laughs> it's the beards. waiting for that comeback <laughs> <laughs> all right jason so now that everyone knows who you are to us you're basically our director um or producer sorry um who's jason hewlett the paranormal investigator tell us a little bit about that because that's why you're here you're not here because you're our producer you're here because you're investigator in the paranormal so give everybody listening into the infinite rabbit hole a little bit of background with that well that's it's it's like a, you know anyone who's interested in, in this stuff like you know like you had denver michael denver michael's on mm-hmm. a few weeks back it usually starts as like this personal experience or, or, or point of interest in their lives it happens you know happens mine was when i was quite young um i still remember it it was really weird i was in the back of my mom's car and we'd gone to one of my friend's houses to pick him up. He was going to come over for a sleepover. We were like five or six. Um, and my mom left the vehicle to go up to the house and get my friend. And for whatever reason, I stayed in the back and it was like one of the, it's a gremlin is what it's called. They're mm-hmm. like a horrendous hash hatchback. Oh, I know exactly I what you're talking gremlin. about. <laughs> I want a gremlin so oh. bad. I love gremlins. It's just, <laughs> my mom gave up a Mustang to get the gremlin. Well, that's just, I, just a, never I, I, I mean, just a I would have too, honestly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm in the back and it has this big hatchback. I'm looking out the back window for whatever reason at the street. And one second there's nothing. And then the next, this face just appears in the back window of the hatchback. It doesn't like rise up and it doesn't come forward. It just appears. And it's like this mongoloidish, you know, almost Jason Voorhees without the hockey mask S face. Hmm. And it's there, and then it's gone. And it startled me, and I dropped to the, the the floor of the, you know, the back of the car, and stayed there until like I heard footsteps coming up because it was gravel. And then my mom shows up with my friend, and I'm like, "Did you guys like my like my friend? Would you just run around the car?" And he's like, "No." And I'm like, "Did you you guys see anyone come around?" And they're like, "No, not at all. There's no one on the street. There's no one on the street. Like I, that's why I was just kind of looking out the back window, just staring at nothing." And you know, my mom was a teacher and she just said it was my overactive imagination, but it wasn't because I can still remember it 45 years later, that face. And it just kicked off this interest in what was that, you know, why did I see that and what's going on? And I just started becoming interested in the paranormal and watching all the shows like, you know, the original In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy and then, you know, sightings when it came on and every Unsolved Mysteries episode about, you know, ghosts or monsters or UFOs and I kind of had, I met friends that were interested in it. So we'd kind of do our own half-assed investigations, not knowing what we were doing. 
And it wasn't really until after my journalism career ended, because you didn't talk about the paranormal as a, as a reporter, I was a crime reporter. You'd lose any credibility at that point, right? Mm-hmm. You talked about it. So I was very quiet in my interests. But it was 2017, right around this time, you know, just before Halloween, and I was surfing the web. My son was watching cartoons. He was five, he was five at the time. And Vancouver Paranormal Society was doing a membership drive. I came across their website kind of thing. And I'm like, no way. So I just emailed them and said, hey, long time interest in the paranormal. and would love to learn more about how you investigate it properly. And they responded and I ended up going on an investigation with them. That's how I got to know Peter Wren, you know, who had co-authored the books with yeah. him, who I work with on We Want to Believe. Mm-hmm. And I started investigating with them. And in 2020, he and I left and formed our own group up here, the Canadian Paranormal Society. Uh, we, we were a foundation. We just became a government registered not-for-profit society. And that's what we do. We go into people's homes who believe they're haunted and we investigate them. We go to historic sites, commercial buildings. Um, and quite often, if we're able, we document what we investigate, uh, which becomes the We Want to Believe series. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. So speaking of the We Want to Believe series, where can people watch that? That is on, on the Paranormal Network itself. It's got its own playlist. And if you Google, like, we want to believe, it'll you'll, episodes will come up that way, too. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to check out Jason and his team, check that out. Uh, Paranormal Network YouTube page. Good stuff. I've, I've watched a, a little bit of it myself. Uh, anybody have questions for Boss Man here? Yeah. So last night, my wife had us watch again um, the 1995 live action Casper movie. And then very recently, I've seen Ghostbusters. So how much is your job similar to both uh, Casper and or Ghostbusters? Uh, not at all, <laughs> actually. Oh. Disappointingly yeah, so. <laughs> because I remember I loved Ghostbusters. Like, I remember when that came out, and I saw it like five times in the theater, right? Because it was just like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And uh, we don't use proton packs, which was disappointing. We don't we don't get to wear mm. coveralls at all. Sometimes there's a team shirt, like Vancouver Paranormal, you got a team shirt. I never wore it because it was purple, and I hated it. Um, <laughs> we we yeah. don't. It's, it's a lot. Uh, and nor is it um, like anything Zach Baggins does. Um, you know, even yeah. like Ghost ghost you know what was it ghost hunt ghost what was that first one ghost hunters yeah ghost hunters right like they were kind of when they started that was close you know what i mean like we do spend a lot of time sitting in rooms with recorders and headphones on and and you know sometimes we've got like temperature gauges and we use a spirit box and you're generally talking to nothing and you could do that for hours like i mean hours a whole night and and not get anything like nothing happens yeah, And you get crushed and you kind of go home and you're tired and you're bitter. And then you get a chance to go back to that location or there's another place you get to investigate. And suddenly one day, the most exciting thing is like you think you hear something and then you kind of go back and listen to your playback and you get a voice that wasn't anyone else that was in the room. There was no one else around that you can attribute it to. And it sounds like, you know, the old man that was supposed to have lived there but died. You know what I mean? And that, that becomes your like, woo moment. Like we got something. It's rare when something happens that's, that's that's big. Like, you know what I mean? Like a door moves or slams on its own or a toy comes flying off a shelf. You know, I've had moments like that and they're really awesome, but they are few and far between. And I have yet to run into anyone that's been possessed, let alone on a weekly basis. Do you, when you say you get a voice, do you mean that you get a clear audible voice or do you get some static that has to be like Clear audible cleaned voice. Up? Okay. Clear, audible voice. The staticky ones will come through on the spirit box, which that's something we tend to take. You have to approach the spirit box with a bit of skepticism because it is an AM FM receiver, right? And you're getting <laughs> yeah. like, you know, the chut, 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 or you're getting radio chatter. Right. Um, the only time we really take what we hear with any sort of resonance is you get like an intelligent response to a question that you asked that fits in with the research that you've done. Um, like at a place that we investigated called Bailey House uh, up in Merritt uh, in British Columbia, there was a guy good who old Merritt. used to own good old Merritt <laughs> of scum and villainy. No, um, there was a guy that used to own it named Tom mm. something. I can't remember the last name off the top of my head. And when we were kind of asking or demanding for a name over the spirit box, we got it, it was like chut, 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 and then it stopped. And then we got a clear male voice going Tom. 
and then it would start to tut, 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 tut again. And so that we give more weight than what could be, you know, the tail end of a song or a bit of some just, you know, radio chatter communication in it. The EVPs are kind of where you, you, you get your gold. Um, and I, before I go on, none of what we find as paranormal investigators would probably hold up in a court of law as actual real evidence. Um, hmm. But it's the closest thing you get in what's really just a pseudoscience. And the hope is that you do enough good work and return to the same locations off enough times that you can form a hypothesis that you can then test repeatedly to attempt to get something that would become more scientifically based evidence. Um, and we've got a few locations where that's kind of what we're doing right now. We've been to a haunting here. We're in, in my hometown that we've been back to five times and we're allowed to go back whenever we want. So we try to get back once a month and still keep what we learn. We try to just apply it next time and try to recreate these scenarios where, where we're getting things. We're having things happen. That's awesome. Yeah, we, I, uh, good. Oh, I was, I was going to ask another question about locations, but go for it. whatever you had to say. No, go for it, kid. Okay, well, I was going to ask, out of everywhere you've been thus far, what's your favorite place that you've investigated? Uh, we really do like Bailey House. We, we even did an episode there, the Dollhouse episode, we want to believe, that was done there. We were just back, actually, a couple of weeks ago um, and got a good series of EVPs there. Uh, and, and, places, and Bailey House is neat because it's a, this historic house and there's this outbuilding. And kind of every time we go there, the, what was the hot spot moves. So like for, for like many investigations, nothing ever happened in the basement at Bailey house, like nothing. And then we suddenly started over a couple of them started getting things happening. That's where we picked up a shadow using our laser grid. Like there was nothing that should have made the shadowy shape of a person, but it was there and we'd turn the light on and there's nothing that could obstruct it. We turned it off and you could still see the shadowy shape of a person in the laser grid and did that four or five times until cool. it just sort of seemed to move away. Um, which was pretty neat. And part of that ended up in the episode. I, I like Bailey house. Um, I investigated before I was officially an investigator, um, Tronquil Sanitarium, uh, up here in Kamloops, which was an old tuberculosis clinic slash mental hospital. Oh yes. They shut, yeah. They deinstitutionalized in the eighties. Yes. And that I've place heard of that hot. place. Yeah. So many stories there. And MTV's fear did an episode out there once too. And yes. I mean, this is like, it's a mental institution. So you can imagine all the stories that would go along with it, right? The, the, the abuse of patients, you know, the, you know, the, the many deaths, you know, suicides, et cetera. There's a tunnel system underneath because it used to snow so much up here. You couldn't wheel patients or supplies above ground because of all the snow. So they did it in the tunnel system. Um, That's cool. It was, it's, it's cool. It's creepy. I've investigated. Kind of like scary, honestly. That's, that's a lot of snow. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's the interior. It gets a lot of snow when we get snow. Um, and that's the only place I had anything happen that actually scared me. Um, and I think that's it's because cool. I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. And um, we were down in the tunnels, myself and my colleague, Donna, who, who claims to be psychic. And we had spent the day investigating. We were in the tunnel system and we came out in what was the basement of the laundry facility. Because they had a full on, it's a whole city out there. It's own city. It has a school, laundry, all this stuff. And we we're deciding it was time to go back to the vehicle because it was getting getting late. And it was like, well, do we go back up and just go across land or do we go back through the tunnels and maybe we'll run into something? And we decided to go through the tunnels. And literally we'd come through these doors. There's no airflow. You could open the door and it would kind of do the swing like bang, ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. Just come through there. I reached around, I grabbed the door, I started pulling back and it slammed shut on me with enough force. I'm six one. I was about 200 pounds at the time that I was pulled off my feet and I hit the door. Hmm. And Donna ran and I ran too. <laughs> come the stairs and out. And I was gone. Sounds um, like there was a Sasquatch on the other side of that door. Who knows, man? I, I don't know what it was. There's no one else there. There's no one else down there. There's no lighting down there. There's nothing. Um, but that was scary. Like that was legitimately, it could have been a homeless guy following. I don't know, but nope. it was, it was terrible. 100% confirmed Sasquatch was down there haunting that basement. Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a place that I really wanted to check out that had a lot of disgusting, disturbing history in, in uh, Clovis, California, where I grew up. It was called the Wolf Manor and it was a uh, sanitarium that there was like 300 people, um, like, you know, elderly people that were abandoned inside of there and they all starved to death. And, uh, when they finally, uh, when the police finally opened up the doors and like looked inside, I mean, they were just like 
you know, months of their own feces they were laying on completely uncared for. There was like five uh, total staff members for the entire uh, for the entire facility. And all these people were just abandoned. And I think the original family that owned Wolf Manor were all gone. And I think there was like so many lawsuits against the estate itself that no one was willing to buy it afterwards. And so it was literally for a number of years, it had a sale, it had a for free sign on the front, but no one would purchase it. And eventually um, a few years ago, they decided to just go ahead and tear it down because it was such an eyesore on Clovis. But it was just like that. I, I don't hold any weight into ghosts and stuff, but I figure it's like, if there's going to be something, it's going to be at some place like that. Right. And it's like, you know, and I'm, I don't believe in them enough that if someone's just like, oh, a thousand dollars to spend the night, I'd be like, let's go. <laughs> Can you I bring do. a toothbrush? <laughs> yeah. It's just there's, like, I don't care. <laughs> there's a place in Edmonton called the Charles Camsell Hospital, which is exactly like the one Jason was ex- describing in Kamloops. There. This, it was a TV hospital, exact same thing. And I've mm-hmm. always wanted to go check it out because all you hear is all the ghost stories out of it. But I, I'm too chicken to go do it. <laughs> it's also in the heart of the city on the west end in edmonton so probably not a good idea anyways <laughs> no not at the best of times <laughs> no <laughs> it's like oh i went there to find some ghosts and end up getting stabbed nice yeah, yeah. <laughs> found a homeless guy and he he stabbed me instead <laughs> but those are the places like those are like because the story it's just natural like hospitals in general even like my colleague peter works for interior health at a hospital and he has odd stuff happening all the time in the hospital like you know just hearing footsteps going up and down the hall and he even sent me video of it like you can hear these footsteps clunk clunk and it's you know six o'clock in the morning you know any place where someone dies or, or there's any kind of trauma those are places where these you know, if there are spirits that's where they're gonna gravitate to right um it would make sense i guess or if people tragically <laughs> die if the spirits can't pass so i don't know there's so many theories behind what ghosts could be if they're, they are ghosts, right? And then you bring different religions into it. And then there's just so many different aspects that, that touch on, I think is what partly makes it so controversial, a subject at the best of times. Um, people are experiencing something and I've experienced enough in my years of doing this that I can't say for sure what's going on. I just, I believe something's happening. Yeah, something I can agree with that. Phenomenal. Right? Yeah, I would say it's more on the demonic side. And when you think you're talking to grandma, you're not, but... Um, but I do believe that stuff's happening, you know? Oh yeah. And, and I've, I've just... and, you know, not, not being, being yeah. Catholic or, or Christian, I, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen, come across anything that I could classify as demonic. And Peter, uh, is an investigator for an ordained exorcist out of Washington state. And he's been doing it 10 years and has come across maybe one case where it could have led to a possible, you know, a possible exorcism. And for the most part, it's, it's mental health or addiction issues that yeah, they, yeah. They attribute to a lot of these right and that's something we take in before we even investigate a how anything we do a full we want to do a full background check like are you seeing a psychologist what medication are you on yeah what are mm-hmm. the plethora of actual things that could be making you believe that you're having a haunting or, or some kind of spectral encounter meth, and 99 yeah. percent of the time it's nothing paranormal at all it's messed up meth yeah <laughs> Yeah. Right? <laughs> or it's a mental health issue or it's someone who just wants to believe so much that their or house meth. is haunted for whatever reason uh, that they they will come up with things that they believe it's haunted but we go and check it out well, and it's like no but you've got like every episode of like paranormal state in your dvd collection and books on the occult and satanism and you know what i mean and you're, you're gothed out and you just want this to happen like there's no not, no sign here that there's anything it's like it's you know not to be that guy right now but it's like um uh... I was making a joke to my sister the other day because all she watches is like those true crime shows and documentaries, but she's terrified of stuff of like everything, right? You just <laughs> you can whisper to her, she, you know, she'll jump. So I'm like, that's what happens. You're just filling yourself with this truth. You're just waiting for a serial killer to come in. Ah, know? Tomer. It's the same thing <laughs> with this kind of stuff too, and and same with conspiracy theories as well. Like people just. They get so consumed that everything is a conspiracy. I'm guilty of that with the conspiracies. So oh, yes, silver are. lining in your hat. Yeah, well, listen, that's not a conspiracy <laughs> theory. Okay? There he goes. 
All right, don't get me started. This is not <laughs> no. about the silver line beanies, okay? Jason, you, I mean, we definitely see it in like the Bigfoot community. Jeremy and I were poking fun at this post for uh, some, I don't know, cryptid thing on mm. Facebook where someone literally took a picture inside the woods of like some trees and there are like this weird shadow in the bottom right hand quadrant of the picture and there's literally nothing there and everyone's just like yeah draw a circle around it so you can show us what we're we're looking at and people they do this all the time right and it's just like because you know I I I think that it's good to like look for this sort of stuff right you know don't don't be startled by it but um there can become an obsession, like you were saying, with all the books and all the, you know, all the different types of media where anytime you see something out of the corner of your eye, you're like, oh, demons, you know, <laughs> Just, <laughs> it's the same hat rack that's been there for five years. But today it's demons because you've been, you know, watching whatever horror movies for days on end. You know, <laughs> it's just it, what is the what is behind all that? Yeah, totally. I, I, I get like stuff sent to me all the time. And one guy sent me this. It was a it was a picture of his bonfire. Nice. And he's like, look at it. There's like, you know, there's a demon in the fire. And I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, I kind of see Batman myself, personally. <laughs> 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 no, I said, it's, it's fire. It's pareidolia. You're seeing what you want to see, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I didn't think you'd be so skeptical and logged off. And that was the end of that. And it's just like, it's the fire. Like it's <laughs> Jason, I thought that you believed in this stuff. What What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've, I get I've gotten... It's... Oh, go, go ahead, ahead Jeff. Go ahead. Oh, oh, well, don't sound so disappointed about it. Jeez, I was just going to say, get a lot of those. We get a lot of those. I've seen multiple people, even in the Infinite Rabbit Hole group, that are just yep. like, this is... I had this encounter, and we all like chat each other like, okay, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to entertain this one? Right. Well, it's nice to at least you all can trade off on that. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Not it. I, I get personally messaged probably at least once a week from somebody that I don't know. And they're like, I need to share a secret with you. Uh, where, that one, that one woman was like, uh, yeah, I know. I, <laughs> she, she, I know. This oh, one. No. <laughs> she, she was talking about how she used to work for this government, the secret government entity in Canada. It was, a, it was, it was, Oh, they do. Uh, this American secret government entity in Canada that was working on um, cloaking devices for Jeeps and Hummers. And she in was Canada? like, yeah. Yes. Just like, yeah, you haven't heard of that? <laughs> <laughs> she, took, she took pictures so of the grounds problems. and the outside of this building. So, that was interesting. so yeah. you know, she was like, I can't tell anybody because they'll kill me. And I was like, but you told me. So... And- and now you just told the world for anybody listening. Now you know. Don't tell us your secrets because <laughs> we will tell them. On an and, and just to let you know, screenshots are are taken and shared. Okay, yep. we 100%. have a laugh about this. <laughs> um, every once in a while, like maybe twice in the whole time that I've had this podcast, uh, I've gotten somebody to message me with something pretty cool. You know, sometimes you do get something pretty cool. Ninety nine percent of the time, though, it's it's uh it's meth demons, right? It's wackadoos. Yeah, it's like that hat rack that Jake was talking about magically <laughs> <Meth> turned. <demons. laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there drinking that oh, that geez. sweet tea, and I'm like, I'm gonna choke on this. <laughs> like, I gotta set it down real quick. <laughs> oh, all right, so. Red circles, Jason. Yes. Uh, one thing we don't have on this show is somebody who's really into the paranormal, right? Um, meaning what, whatever they are, you know, what they're commonly known as ghosts, right? Um, do you, does, does your community also suffer from these phantom red circles that show up in Facebook posts and everything. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it's, it's, I think it's just, it's, that's what people do, right? They do the, yeah, it's, I think it's just everywhere. Any, any place where there is an interest in anything that's kind of fringe science, that kind of stuff's going to show up. Yeah. Basically. Right. It yeah. just comes with the territory. 
It's so you know? crazy. It's... Everybody wants to discover something. I, th- I think yeah. that there's a, a deep human like urge to explore and discover things. And I think that now we're at this age, not that you can't do that because there's a way that you can always learn and, and discover things, but there's some weird thing where people just like, they have to be, they feel like they have to be the one. I found this thing, the circle it so you could see it. Like, and it, they, they really believe it. People really believe that they see something. You know, I never really thought of it like that. That's a that's a good one. That I is like that's that. perfect way to sum it up, Jeff. Like that that's that's bang on. And that's and we and they can do that now. You can just say, Oh, I took the picture with my phone and you go in and the edit thing and you circle it and you put it up and here it is, right? And I think people do it now. We used to get it on um a good example, like when I was a crime reporter, I had like the the police scanner right on right on my desk. So I listened to every kind of police call coming in during the course of like my shift. And I lost track of how many times someone saw a guy with a rifle walking down such and such a street. <laughs> but they'd be driving by in their car. It's like, yeah, guy drove by, saw a person walking with a rifle, called the police. Didn't stop, didn't take a moment to think that maybe it's a, we're in Canada, it's a hockey stick. Or it right. could have been, you know, anything, it could have been anything. Like, a, and, but they just jump on it right away. And so now you can do that with this stuff. You take a picture of it, you circle it, and you post it to social media without even stopping to really think about what, what you saw, right? And what you're posting. Um, My thing with those little... pictures as well is they always seem to claim that the picture was taken a few years back, but it looks like this very clear, crystal clear picture that could very well could have been taken on a phone that was created yesterday, mm-hmm. right? And they're putting random circles in corners and oh yeah mom took this photo back in 2014 no she didn't <laughs> it's, it's almost like they're it's almost like they're out there hunting for that dopamine hit yeah you know they're like mm, oh yeah that great meth dopamine <laughs> well it's exciting <laughs> right you get attention for a while you know people kind of get on it and if it gets enough traction it can become a it can become a meme it can become you know go viral like there's so yeah. many different different things. And it's just so easy to do that. Now, no, you're right. I think you're right. There, there's this desire to be recognized and acknowledged and even get a little bit famous. And that's just a real easy way to do it. Right. Yeah. The the easiest way to do it is to create a podcast and get scouted by someone famous. I mean, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Like, like we said, the man's got an IMDB page. We talked about that before <laughs> we started recording. That's why I was so indifferent about that picture of that big big old footprint i took when i was out on that camping trip and jeremy's like oh you got to post this and i was like okay but i was like whatever because i knew it was going to happen anyway you know we're yeah. just that good i'm like <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to push this fame it's gonna happen you know you should have posted it you should have posted it and added like 15 red circles and been like there's 27 bigfoot in this picture <laughs> <laughs> Pointing at the, the pine Point. needles on the ground <laughs> yeah <laughs> look at them all um Speaking of Jason, uh, let's take a little trip outside of the paranormal and uh, let's ask, do you believe in Bigfoot? Oh, for sure I do. No, yeah. good. I, I you... live right smack in Bigfoot area territory up here in British Columbia. Like... Me too. You're yep. not fired then. You can stay. <laughs> we'll allow it. I like you a little bit more, boss. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep the meth demons at bay today. Well, on that on that note of questioning, what, where are you at in the conspiracy world, Jason? <laughs> it, dun, it's, dun, it, dun. it's funny, my buddy uh, Sean and I. He does the the music for We Want to Believe, and he's kind of a resident skeptic. A lot of the conspiracies that people are talking about right now, we remember when they were popular the first time back in like nineties, <laughs> but no one was into conspiracies. And we were just considered nuts because we talked about this kind of stuff all the time, and. Um, I think it's like, it's kind of interesting that they've, so many of them have kind of come back around and, and I, it's, and how it's just, it, it's accepted. Like people now just talk about conspiracies, like, like it's the, the regular news. Do you know what I mean? And, and people oh, yeah. are almost more inclined to, to, to go down that conspiracy rabbit hole plug um, to kind of just, they like to be a part of it they, and they're giving it weight and they're giving it more weight, I think in some regards, like than actual like scientific evidence or, 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 you know, real factual facts. Um, I think if anything that the whole pandemic couple of years has brought all this stuff even more into the mainstream than it was before. Cause I just think there's people a like in terms of like, you know, UFOs and Bigfoot and, and, and ghosts and stuff, people just, it's created like a second, almost spiritualist movement. People want 
there to be more to life than just, you know, go to get, go work your job, go home, watch TV, eventually die. You know what I mean? There's got to be more to life than that and the capitalism, et cetera. And they're looking, I think, for deeper meanings to things. And I think there's so much distrust of government and, 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 you know, science and all this for whatever various reasons, because of how the whole pandemic was handled, that they're giving more weight to conspiracies Hmm. and believing that. No one wants to think that, you know, this, that could have just been a virus that happened. It's got to have been created in a lab somewhere and got out. And if you believe one of them, it was created by Canadians and and we let it out. So, (laughs) well, they did did just come out and say that, uh, what was it? Boston college, Jake? Uh, that. Boston University, they just made one that has an 80% kill rate. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Released on the news like yesterday. Good idea. But anyway. Yeah. My favorite thing, to a wet market and let it out. <laughs> my favorite thing is people that are so deep into, uh, you know, like, like you're saying, a pseudoscience, right? And they don't regard other forms of pseudoscience with any sort of weight to it. It's like I'm an incredible skeptic when it comes to the paranormal. Um, but I'm also a Christian, so I believe in the supernatural, right? But it's just like there's a little bit of a difference there, but it's just like I, I don't completely disregard it. I'm willing to listen, right? But I was talking to this this lady at the county fair a couple months ago, and it was hilarious because I'm sitting here. She saw I was wearing one of our Infinite Rabbit Hole Bigfoot shirts, and she started chatting me up about it, right? And I'm talking to her about Bigfoot and the evidence and the patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film and all this sort of stuff, and she's just completely shutting me down. She's like, there's no way that's impossible. You know, I'm just like every continent on earth with the exception of Antarctica and North America has apes. Every single one, Mexico, they have apes, you know, or they have monkeys and stuff. And she's just shut me down. Meanwhile, she's at a booth where she's selling people crystals for healing and stuff. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. (laughs) How are you this dense? Like, it's crazy. It's just like, you know, it, it, it. it's just wild to me that, you know, there's that huge disconnect there. You get people that are so deep into conspiracies, but anything else, they're like, nope, sorry, that's just ridiculous. Or, you know, people that are really big into the paranormal, but you hit them with, you know, a conspiracy or you hit them with, a, you know, a cryptid or something like that. Even, and we can say cryptozoology is, you know, the study of animals that used to be extinct and maybe they're still around and stuff like that. And we have some good examples like the colacanth and whatever, but they're just like, nope, sorry. <laughs> just completely just shut it down and it's it's hilarious to see all those little sex and stuff <laughs> it's 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 almost like the high school cliques that's how i would i would i kind of oh sure yeah it, right and and for i know sure. what, what what's frustrating is like the paranormal investigators like like me won't talk to the cryptozoologists and the cryptozoologists want nothing to do with the ufo guys yeah the ufo guys don't want to deal with the conspiracy people but it, like really we should all be working on the same field here trying to find answers i i think it's all interconnected. being lied to <laughs> collectively yeah. <laughs> yeah you know just to get a little conspiratorial about that for a second i feel like Do it, this Jeff. was i feel like this was done by design man i feel like the the fracturing and splintering of all of these like you know different things right these fringe sciences right these all these things were fractured on purpose, right? These groups on Facebook for specific things. And everybody's dug into their idea. And like, you can't think about the possibility of aliens because the earth is flat or you can't think about, you know, whatever it is, right? It can't be ghosts because it's demons or whatever. I think that that was done purposely so that we don't all put our minds together and figure out some of the stuff that's actually going on. That's yeah. just my what? conspiracy yeah. thought of the day. I, I like that. It makes sense. Even like back in the day, like, we had an idea like, you know, about UFOs is like, why don't like, cause there's this big UFO group online. It's like, why don't we all just at the same night go out with our telescopes? We all decide we're going to look at a certain longitudinal latitudinal patch of sky, all of us for two hours at this certain time and just record what we find. You know what I mean? Like just to see if we mm-hmm. find it, no matter what part of the Western, like it was all on, we we're all on the West coast part we can then compare notes after and see if we saw the same things and if we could count it or discount it and you know we got kicked off the page because you, <laughs> you can't get organized and do yeah, that why too would you organize man no sense yeah for sure like, man that's what we're doing this for <laughs> like you know like, <laughs> that's come on. the point that's the point and well, it's next next time you have a genius idea like that just go ahead and post that up on the infinite rebel we'll allow it yeah awesome. we got you yeah awesome no problem Right. No, nope, nobody's going like, to do it with you, but we'll we'll, 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 we'll <laughs> do it together. Um, but it's like Jeff's saying, it's it's it almost feels like it is by design. That's why 
it's so fractured. It's almost like they want someone somewhere wants this whole field to stay a pseudoscience for whatever, for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. because they don't want the crystals to heal you, man. <laughs> or find out we're all really aliens. Say Con what you want. That crystal does not work on body odor the way that deodorant does. <laughs> you, you, <wanna> know, <laughs> you know, I learned the other day, you know why cats purr? Why? <laughs> because they're for they, healing. For healing. Yeah. The the frequency the of the vibration. The, yeah. Right? So light is a vibration. Healing. Everything's a vibration. Color, light, you know, minerals, any crystals. Everything is a light. So everything is a vibration. So they could technically heal you. But I'll stand out on this one. Yep. <laughs> the whole reason why we recorded tonight was to secretly get everybody listening to go to their local SPCA office and get a cat. Get you one. Yep. yep. Sorry, that's not going to happen. I don't like cats. It's for uh, healing. I like it's cats. medicinal. I it's, get you a medicinal it's, it's, cat. Yeah. Nah, I break your leg. Young. Wrap a cat on it. I'll, there you go. <laughs> I'll die young before I go buy a, a cat. <laughs> got a headache? Wear a cat. I got an extra <laughs> one if you want, Jake. No, I'm kidding. You can't have either one of my cats. I love my cats. Good, because I'll release into the wild to be with some kind. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> take it out of the woods and release it. Oh boy, poor kitty. You bet your tongue. Lick a cat. <laughs> 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 what if the cat bit your tongue? Like Bite the, the cat. cat back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, Louise. Oh, we have fun. Oh man, we're so funny. Anyways, um, I gotta, I gotta take a little trip back because you said something, and before we get too far away, you were, you were saying that you remember when uh, these conspiracies were around the first time, and. I just, I, my mind started rolling and it's just like, I could, I could imagine back in 1776 when they were signing the, the Declaration of Independence, um, they were having conversations about reptiles or reptilians and those white <laughs> wigs that they were really, that they were wearing were like the, the old fashioned tinfoil hats. <laughs> 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 I like it. <laughs> it's true. It's all true, man. History every, is made up, so who knows? Yeah, every 126 years Boom. it just comes around. There you go. You know? Another fake topic. Part of the matrix. <laughs> History is fake. Hey everybody. Bear with us while we take this quick break. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, the founding fathers were reptilians. <laughs> so what do you what do you feel about like um aliens, you know, extraterrestrial aliens? What's your thoughts on that whole thing, Jason? Well, I think I think it's fascinating. I mean, there's been, you know, reports of UFOs going all the way back to the Bible in biblical times, right? In the Great Pyramid times, like, you know, chariots of the gods. I you know, there's a there's a whole argument. I could just see Jacob giving me this eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to. That, that, you know, that it all could have started from aliens, right? There's there's the whole very just discussions about pre you know pre societies and um, empires working with the gods to create, which could have been aliens to create the pyramids or the Mayans and their temples and the you know, big sky the sculptures that you can see down. If you go look up down, you can see like the different. I can't remember where it is. Um, they look they're just hieroglyphs, but you look to look down from above to see them. The Nazca lines. Why would they yeah? Why would they create that? So thanks. I had a seniors moment for a second there. <laughs> but you know, in Victorian times they talked about seeing flying airships, you know, and then and then they just sort of morphed into being these you know, high tech spacecraft. I think it's something that's been with us for as long as we've been on this planet. Um, I'm sure they've been visiting us forever. The Aboriginal tribes talk about, you know, they're they're the star lords and they're friends from space. This is something that's been around for a long, long time. And I think it's only recently that, you know, the government has just not wanted people to know about it, whatever it is, you know, once Roswell happened and sort of went, as we got more evolved and in free, and information became freer and ease, more easily dispersed, it's like they've started clamping down more and become more concerned mm -hmm. about yeah. what's going on with aliens. That That's how I kind of look at it. Back, back before there was sort of really highly organized industrial societies and, you know, radios and TV. I don't think people cared so much. Um, and information was, whatever information there was, it was easier to control. But as that's kind of changed, now they've become, 
more concerned with the truth getting out about what is going on out there with with aliens Mm -hmm. um, and visitors from other planets if indeed they're from other planets they they could be they could be interdimensional beings you know or or from different different timelines or different parts of the multiverse you know that's just a big theory going around that i've kind of i kind of like yeah i I just want to step in real quick uh, and fill in some holes um if you're listening to this you're mo- you most likely already know of it, but Chariot of the Gods is a book by the author uh, Eric er- 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 Eric von Daniken. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, Jake, I think that you would find it interesting, nope. but at the same time, you would tear it apart. <laughs> no, I, I, I do, I do. <laughs> but mostly, this is for Danny. Danny, this is one of my recommendations. Go ahead, Danny. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there real quick for anybody. I, I love promoting books and I think chariot chariots of the gods is, is, is something that, you know, if you're interested in the phenomena of UFOs and how it could tie into history, uh, especially very, very early history, uh, that that's a book that you might be interested in reading. Yeah. The, the whole ancient aliens, ancient astronaut theory on the days that I, that I do believe in space, I'm there, <laughs> you know what I mean? So catch me on the right day today i'm with you i'm thinking yeah because i you know i just listened to a podcast it was all about the anunnaki and planet x and the ancient astronauts and stuff so yeah i'm with you Ooh, today planet x that, yeah, that cool stuff's just topic. fascinating right i think it, yeah. it just lends more credence to to the whole ufo alien alien debate same with like you know going back to bigfoot like every country and every continent on the planet has a wild man yeah bigfoot's mm-hmm. real Right. 100%. It's, it's same with like in the Netherlands, it was trolls, but the trolls are big, hairy creatures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which sound a lot like Bigfoot and similar in, in their folklore. So, I mean, there's, there's something there. Come on. Um, yeah. Or yeah. meth demons. Yep. Or, yeah, meth <laughs> demon. All about the meth demons. What about giants? <laughs> giants? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's one of those things I've not ever seen one. <laughs> so, I mean, I just. <laughs> <laughs> Nor experienced one, nor know someone who has. So I, 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 as of yet, have no opinion on giants, one way or the other. We're we're still waiting on Jake's next giant episode. What about dinosaurs? Do you believe that dinosaurs exist? Here we go. (laughs) 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 Poor Jeff. (laughs) I do. (laughs) You do. Oh, we have man, a place Jeff. called Drum Heller in Alberta where you can go where it's the dinosaur museum and you can see all it's the bones. It's a really there. cool place, it's right? Awesome. I tried awesome. telling them. I'm sure that plaster, fake plaster casts of nothing are really cool, <laughs> yeah. And there's really good artists out there. You think that every alien movie that those aliens actually exist? Come on now. I don't I don't think that was on the Paranormal Network, was it? That, that episode was Dinosaurs wasn't are on. fake? No. No, I don't, I don't think, think it was. So. No, I think yeah. that was just before. It would have been highly entertaining to listen to. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, Maybe there's we'll... always always a chance, Jason. You just have to listen to it and not watch uh, it. Yeah, it's true. True. I could go back. <laughs> but but if, you want a, if you want a good laugh, it's pretty pretty good. No. Uh, sure it is. Uh, Jeff, like, kind of broke my brain with that one. Like, he, he had some too. very compelling stuff. Like, it was like, okay, you know, most of this is probably horse crap. But there was definitely some, like... You know, why does this one family control all of the licensing for every dinosaur, like video game and TV show and movie that's ever been made and all sorts of stuff? Like, you know, it's all a huge money industry and everything. Why does these two, you know, was it archaeological? Um, uh, was it like the Smithsonian and then something else? Why is it every single time something's found, they swoop up in there and then the person doesn't even really get credit for it maybe it, they name it after the person that found it but you know they just take over the dig site and stuff you know it's just like he had a lot of stuff to say where it kind of broke my brain a little bit because i'm just like oh shoot it's our number one episode and in, in like, sure. aud- the I'm audio sure. only uh platform so you know if you're if you're listening to or watching this show on the paranormal <laughs> network go ahead and jump over to spotify or <laughs> Anywhere Wherever else you, you get your podcasts. <laughs> and check out Dinosaurs Are Fake, starring Jeffrey Dinosaurs Are Fake Fernandez. <laughs> His name changes every time. <laughs> yeah. Freaking crazy. I don't know. So, Jason, what what's on the docket, man? What's coming up next for you? Um, I guess I still have to write another book. I'm contracted to write 
one more book for Beyond the Fray Publishing Ooh, uh, that Peter and I are. This? Pardon me. Can we talk about uh, the topics that you were right about that for Beyond? Yeah, if you Fray? want, sure. Yeah, we can we can hit on that. Well, so um, forgive me. I don't have the the titles of your books with me. You mind filling us in on that? Well, there's there's three out so far. Uh, two with under the "I Want to Believe" banner, and one of them is called "One Man's Journey into the Paranormal," and that yeah. kind of tells Peter's story. My colleague Peter Wren, and his whole story from because he's been doing this. He's from the UK, so he started with his interest in the paranormal when he was a boy, and then he investigated all over the world. And it just kind of follows his story and his life's bit, and bringing it up to the present. The second book is called "An Investigator's Archive," and that's where we interviewed, I think, twenty two different paranormal investigators, filmmakers, cryptozoologists. You know, um, Kieran O'Keefe from the UK, Paul Bradford, who was on, you know, uh, Ghost Hunters International, um, you know, Ken Gearhart and then, you know, Seth Breedlove from Small Town Monsters. We talked to a whole bunch of people, plus some investigators that Peter and I knew. And we basically just tell their story per chapter and what kind of their big experiences have been and what their theories are on the paranormal. And then the most recent book that came out in June is Dying Light, an investigation into near-death experiences. That's that the one cool. I want to talk about. Okay. I mean, I, I, I love hearing a celebrity talk about other celebrities. That's cool. But I want to talk about NDEs, man. Let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Can you uh, sure. shine a light on, on uh, just give us a little teaser, man. Like, what, what, what kind of uh, stuff can we look forward to with that book? Because that's, that's the one I'm going to grab here pretty soon there, Jason. It's, it was interesting. It came out of writing an investigator's archive because one of the investigators, Angela Artuso, is out of New York City, and she's a paranormal investigator there. So we're hearing her story. And then kind of in the middle of her story, she talked about this experience she had where she basically got, got hit. It was in a car accident and pretty much died and had a near-death experience. And it was so different than, you know, the, the, the tunnel of light and, you know, the, the shadowy figures, et cetera, and, you know, the, the feeling of euphoria. It was so very, very different that it, like, it didn't feel like it belonged in a book where we're just talking about paranormal investigators and their life stories. So we I messaged Peter after, and I'm like, you know, we should do a book on near-death experiences. And he had had one. He'd had a liver transplant and had a near-death experience during that. Hmm. And so we decided, you know, okay, let's do it. And last October, we started doing research. So we covered off. We talked to some people about their experiences. So we do kind of like the experience or report. Plus, we talked to like, you know, like neuroscientists, um, grief counselors, various aspects to try to just take a real look at, at what this phenomenon could be and what's happening. And it ended up with more questions than answers, as is always the case. But it was really interesting to hear all these different people's accounts and talk to this one gal who had researched 2,500 different near-death experiences, oh, ranging cool. in people who had been dead for several minutes to up to 24 hours and come oh, back. Wow. Um, and just how each of these experiences, there's they're sort of similarities but they're also very subjective based on your life experience your religious background lack of religious background etc so it was really quite quite a fascinating thing to research and write and then it kind of helped me just work through some stuff that i'd have happen in my life and it was it was interesting it was a very rewarding book to write but probably out of the three the hardest one to do too yeah so uh if you're giving away too much of the books i don't want to uh create a spoiler for anybody that's thinking about going to get the book or, you know, I have the author right here in front of us. Um, so I don't want to do any disrespect, but is there anything that you just found was consistent with almost every case and you can basically draw a good picture as to what's actually going on? Or is this something where it's all over the place depending on who had it? Um, there's a little bit of both actually, which is interesting. Like the, the big takeaway that happened in every, every one is that everyone who came back, their outlook on life changed. Um, they, they worried less. They, there was more of a sense of knowing the truth about the world and their place in it. They generally came back with a much more positive outlook on things. They know none of them fear death at all. Because there's no doubt in their mind that they're going someplace else that's better, um, which supports like very much like the religious standpoint. Um, they all got a chance during these experiences, say, say for one or two, where they could do like this. They had a moment to kind of look back at their lives and what they had done right and what they had done wrong and how they affected other people and how they hurt other people. And that hurt was they in turn felt. So they kind of saw the mistakes that they had made, um, which I thought was really fascinating. And uh Many of them also came back with sort of a, a, a 
heightened sense of like in terms of being to tap into that there's spirits around us, things like that, being very much more empathetic, empathic, um, feeling the emo emotions deeper, being able to connect with people on a more emotional, spiritual level, that kind of thing, which I thought was really, really interesting. Very cool. Yeah. It's interesting how much that, that, and even um, certain like spiritual experiences that you hear or read about, like all of that aligns with <clears throat> what people experience on like high doses of psychedelics as well. Like it mm -hmm. seems to all be very much related, which is interesting to me. Well, and that's where the theory that it is your brain just firing. You know what I mean? Is right. your body shutting down different parts of your brain or releasing different drugs into your system to just make right. the transition easier, right? Yeah, DMT. Yeah, which is well, quite you know, fascinating. That's that there's theories that going back thousands of years that the idea of alchemy comes from this is because they understood that your brain was doing this alchemical transformation at this point of death or in dreams or whatever. Um, and then that, that in turn led to this whole, you know, like philosophical freaking evolution of thought and shit, you know, but yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, that's what the book was just very much, that was kind of my takeaway from it. If I have this, this takeaway, whatever this phenomenon is, it, it's not a bad thing. It's a positive thing. I didn't come across anyone in our research who had a bad near death experience, although there are people who have had them, um, which would be interesting to try to do a follow-up book and touch that, more on that aspect of it. That was going to be my question without giving too much away. Did you meet anybody who said the exact opposite of that or experienced the opposite? No, I have heard of people who had, but none of the people that I interviewed for it hmm. had had them. So Lynn Russell, who that was the That would be interesting to hear about too. Yeah, well, well, she talked about a couple of them, very much like people ending up in what they thought was literally was hell. Like they, hmm. they ended up there being tormented and everything. But all, and, and it, was, it was interesting. The, person, the, some, the one person who ended up in there literally just started saying, you know, like Jesus loves me, this I know kind of thing. And then they were out. Like they were out of that whatever that place was and doing hmm. the tunnel heading somewhere else. Um, and then eventually they were crash carted back. So it was really interesting. And that's where the subjective part really seems to come into like people. One of the people we interviewed was, was raised Catholic. And so the figure that he saw at the end of the tunnel looked like Jesus, like it, it was Jesus, uh, someone else. It was their father who had passed away, you know, years, years before, right. Or a grandfather. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a real, fascinating subject and i mean we, we just scratched the surface like really there's only mm -hmm. so much you can do in one book before you kind of it does have to go to your publishing deadline and you know you don't want to have like this tomb of a thousand pages um so yeah it was it was it was it was an interesting book to write do you guys do audible on beyond, some beyond the fray books are audible so i'm hoping knock on wood or something that one day one of mine will because I, I know there's people who would prefer to listen to it than read it yeah i do like really long drives and stuff and i'll listen to an audiobook or while i was traveling to jeremy's place and back on the plane i was listening to audiobooks and stuff i just don't have the attention span for reading like the most attention span i have is my morning and evening bible studies and that's it like it just yeah you know it absolutely kills me um you know I, I i don't know like when it comes to ndes and stuff i'm i want to like look into um, the evidence behind what people are saying, because lots of people say that they have NDEs saying that you were dead, brain dead for 24 hours is, um, um, well, that's a miracle to come back from that. So where's the actual evidence? Where's the medical documentation that you were dead or whatever it was versus just your say so. So that would be something that I would, uh, have to look into to regard most NDEs, um, especially since they're so varying and wide, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, you know, every, you know, and I'm counting Christianity in this, every religion in the world has basically, if you did the thing, this is what the result is. And if you didn't do the thing, this is what the result is. Either it's nothing or it's hell or some version of it, or it's something bad, right? But everyone has this completely different experience. Well, someone's got to be right and someone's got to be wrong. Or, you know, if someone's right, then everyone's wrong. You know, if atheists are right, then all the religions are wrong. You know, it's got to be something like that. Um, and so with all the varying experiences, it does lead me more into the idea that this is not people actually crossing over into the afterlife. Um, 
but more so their brain is just firing off you know all that sort of stuff they're not actually dead right um because it's you know people coming back from brain death they have a lot more issues than just oh man i just you know that was that was crazy it's like well half your body isn't functioning anymore right there's just oh, totally, some totally. huge issues and implications that happen with that sort of stuff most people um you know i i don't believe that even if you're dead dead like your heart stopped and stuff like that it still takes a while for your brain to die um but once that consciousness happens, lasts know. a long time like death we even had talked to a to a gentleman named lawrence ward who's like you know done neuroscience mm -hmm. and he says you know consciousness is your but when your body is dead your heart is stopped your brain is dead mm -hmm. and rigor mortis has set in your body's begun to decay that's death right yeah right so anything that happens pre-death is just some form of your consciousness reacting to what's happening to your body as it's shutting down mm. And that was, we made a real point of wanting to have that in the book, especially amongst some of the stories that get pretty out there. Yeah. Cause it's, you got to anchor it. And, you know, being a journalist, there's got to, I left, I want both sides of the argument in there, right? And leave it up to the reader to determine what's going on. And they're going to believe whatever they want, anyways. Sure. So it was, it, it's, yeah, we had to make sure that that was in there because too many people, I think, especially in our day and age, they have their argument and their belief. And then they're just going to stick to that and they're going to find whatever evidence they can just to support that. And that's mm -hmm. it. They don't want to, they don't want to venture off that path into something else. That's doesn't fit with their point of view. Yeah. There's so much of that, which is in the books we've written, we've made sure we can back, we, we put like historical research in, try to find other documented evidence that supports a story. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's very important. And even as paranormal investigators, that's what we try to do at every level of what we do. Okay, cool. Yeah. That is the most that's awesome. terrifying concept. I, I research I've, I've ever thought of <laughs> Evidence? no oh. no just could you could you imagine just having your consciousness just know that you're dead right be you're you're thinking you're like okay i'm dead this is it right this is it everything's black can't move my body can't breathe can't do nothing i'm dead just waiting to to, to just fade off and go on to whatever's next jeez that is well, 160,000 people worldwide every day experience that so it's one not, day you know <laughs> i've never day. had i've never had an nde but i have had like psychedelic experiences and it seems terrifying thinking no. about it even thinking about the experiences that i've had that weren't terrifying thinking about it if i were to relay the experience to you it sounds terrifying but the experience itself ends up not being that it's actually very blissful uh, it's like a form of ecstasy in a weird kind of way when you cross over into this whatever realm that you're in in those those weird states you know i'm gonna freak the fuck out maybe yeah <laughs> i'm sure a lot of people do some people get oh, bad I'm trips sure. too yeah. see i i'm not a i'm not a big ghost person um don't I, I, me. I, I feel like the concept <laughs> is is really neat right um, and I've, I've always joked that like, I'm, I'm so afraid of death. That's, that's one thing that I'm just absolutely petrified of. And I always joke that if, if, you know, ghosts and spirits are, are a real thing, I'm going to be one because I'm not going to be able to let go. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just I'm just not going to be able to. And that's, that's one of the arguments. Well, you know, when people there's, there's, like I said, there's no there's all just theories. Most of this stuff is all just theories anyways, but the, why, why some spirit, there are some spirits and they're just the ones that don't want to move on. They're not ready to pass on. Um, you know, they may, might be religious, but not think they're worthy of heaven yet. Right. And they don't want to go to hell. So they stay, um, or they just, they have unfinished business and they want to try to resolve that business or it's your, you know, your energy, you die and your energy has to go somewhere. So it goes into the ground or, or the electric electromagnetic field, or when you die, you go, to, you, they're not ghosts, but it's, at all they're just beings from a different part of the parallel multiverse that we're bumping into from time to time there's so many different theories and ideas about it that which is why i find it so fascinating i think it's absolutely fascinating you know just to kind of go off of the other point i made earlier same kind of deal i feel like this is almost set up in a way to be that way on purpose you know you you <clears throat> materialize the society and the world that we all live in to the point to where nobody wants to die, right? Like we're all attached to the physical reality that we've created for ourselves, right? Whereas if you go back thousands of years, people weren't, at least from the history we're told, people weren't that way so much. People were much more 
ready to go to whatever heaven they believed in, you know, whether it was through battle or whatever it was. So I think that it's almost as if, you know, the lizard people, right? Like they have constructed this society to keep us more attached to it. So more of our souls and spirits are stuck in this realm, you know, like a spiritual war, like a religious war of some kind, you know? Yeah. Cell phones are going to create a lot of ghosts, dude. It's our Western culture too is far yeah. more terrified mm-hmm. than you go to Eastern like parts of Eastern Europe or even like in, in Asia, they're not, the death is honored. It's, it's this, it's right. not this scary event at all. Like you're prepared. Everyone's ex- looking forward to going, <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like you're saying it's something in our capitalist Western culture is really, you know, sold us on the idea that we don't even have funerals anymore. Right. Or wakes They're celebrations of life. Like you don't even mm-hmm. want to use the word death or dead anywhere. It's, it's kind of sad actually. Well, yeah, I'm a big stoic philosophy person. One of the big beliefs there is memento mori. And that is you're, you could leave life at any moment. So make sure every moment counts and live it the way that you want to live it and live a good life and help others as you go. And that's, that's how I, I spend every day. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jacob. Oh, no, I was just going to say that, you know, I mean, it's, it's so depressing because if, you know, if you died now, you might miss the next Marvel movie that came out. (laughs) But people in other parts of the world where that isn't a thing that they think about, mostly it's like, I mean, there's some pretty, some pretty unfortunate people out there. Um, I think that if you were more in a position where you are, you know, hoping for your next meal, you'd be less inclined to be so scared of death. You know, you'd just be like, I mean, it's going to happen eventually. And so I think that our Western culture or just a first world sort of uh, mindset makes us, you know, I think it's greed is that we just, mm. you know, want to fill our lives with everything just that could comfort. possibly make it as pleasurable as possible. So the thought of being without that is just catastrophic to us. But you go other places where that isn't the case, and maybe it's family or, you know, whatever that other alternate thing is. And, death isn't that big of a deal because it's a reunion sort of experience. It's a, you know, whatever they believe in that, in that particular culture, but it's not this self-obsessed, you know, give me everything so I can be happy, you know, but I'm still miserable sort of mindset. Well, and and we are miserable really as a society right now, right? We're, we're horribly miserable, you know, and, and we don't want to do anything hard. (laughs) We want comfort all the time. And uh, how dare you, you know, make me feel uncomfortable or, or want me to go wash the dishes Put or, me or, on or hold cook for even, 10 minutes, right? you piece of crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's how really dare. Just, yeah. It's, 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 but it's really sad, you yeah. know, to watch. Wow. This, uh, got this went, this went, this got good. <laughs> this is good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I, uh, I dove into this book. Um, yeah, for anybody looking for that book, it's a uh, dying light and investigation into near death experiences from Jason Hewlett and Peter Wren. I found it on Amazon, so if anybody's looking for an outlet to buy it on, uh, Jason, do you have another outlet people can look? All, they're all on Amazon, or you can order them direct from Beyond the Fray Publishing. There you go. Uh, and just to kind of help Jake here a little bit, Shannon and Jeff, if you guys are listening, audiobooks. Mm, yes. <laughs> Hit up boss man Jason Hewlett with some audiobooks. I'll that even way. narrate them. I'll, I'll read yeah. it, sure. Hey, I was going to say, cut me a check. I'll narrate some books right now. Let's go. <laughs> 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 I mean, shoot, that's that's how I do most of my research for the show. I'm in the garage, wrenching on the motorcycle, listening to some audiobook or some doc- documentary, and then I'll pause it, run over, and take some notes real quick. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, that, yeah. that's, that's a great, I, like, because I, I listen, I like to, paint miniatures and stuff like models and do stuff oh, like nice. that. I listen to like podcasts and, you know, and, and stuff. So I think that'd be having a mer- motorcycle to work on. would be awesome. Good for you. Right you want on. one? I got a spare. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just sneak it in the house and my wife would lose her mind. What? A motorbike? Come on. Two boss man from the, the show you didn't fire. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> All right, um, we're going to we're going to start bringing it down now. Uh, Jason, thanks a lot, man. This was this was a lot of fun. This was really cool Um, for all of those listening and watching in on the Paranormal Network. Where can they find all things Jason Hewlett? How can they follow you? Where can they, 
you know, where can they see Jason do Jason stuff? <laughs> Why would anyone want to see Jason do Jason stuff? I don't know. Um, a lot of a lot of what I do is here on the Paranormal Network, uh, you know, on YouTube. And of course, we have our own Facebook page as well, um, where you can catch We Want to Believe, Hunting the Haunted, which I do with Peter Wren as well. And then I narrate the UFO show. And of course, this fine programming as well as many others. Um, fun, yeah. Books are through Amazon and Beyond the Fray Publishing. Uh, we have the Canadian Paranormal Society on Facebook, uh, which is that's where we kind of work a lot of our contacts off of right now. So people are welcome to come and join that page. And then I'm, you know, I'm on Instagram, jhewlett72, and on Facebook as well. Like that's, yeah, I haven't, I've, I've, I've refused to go the route of creating like, you know, jasonhewlettghosthunter.com. Oh, yes. And, and trying to do that because... I'm gonna go buy I, that. You're gonna you're gonna buy it from me in order to use it. <laughs> That's part of the problem. <laughs> but I, I try to keep things as simple as possible. But that's that's kind of where you can find my stuff in a nutshell. And you know, thanks to everyone who's supported our work so far, and and who supported the network and supported Infinite Rabbit Hole. It's everybody puts a lot of good hard work into what they do. So it's nice to see people who appreciate it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, and you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you don't like chit chat, then maybe podcasts aren't for you because you know that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna bring this up every episode. Podcast is. We're gonna turn into a shirt just to make fun of that person. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> a shill hat. Yeah, I, and you know, it's not even one person. It's been like three or four different comments on a couple different episodes where it's like these guys chit chat too much. It's like what. <laughs> It's like going to the radio and say, why is this radio full of talking? Why isn't this watching? I mean, like, what the bleep, right? guys? <laughs> like, come on. Entertain know? me in other ways. Do it. <laughs> sure, it'll be a podcast. Dance, monkey, talk, dance. Talk. Yeah. Uh, right. Pardon my yeah. friend. <laughs> and then uh, just one one other commenter to shout out. Uh, somebody was talking about one of us who burped. I think it was me. Like, <laughs> went like this and was like, excuse me. And the guy was like, uh, Burping is disgusting. You shouldn't do it on on a, such a public uh, platform. Uh, sorry, man, we're not professional. Bodily like, functions all. happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's going to happen. So yeah, I have my boss man right here. So and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I do it all the come time. at us then. Pull <laughs> out. There's more important things to worry about in this world. You're like, but um, ripping him on the on the paranormal show. He's like, did you hear that? It's a frog. <laughs> it might have been a ghost or something. It wasn't burping, it was a ghost. Um <laughs> all right. Well, that's it, everybody. That is Jason Hewlett. That is our boss. That is the guy who I don't know why he did it, but he put us on his network. Thank you though. Well, thank uh, you guys for coming on. It's been he, it's been great having your show on there. It's been really entertaining to listen to and, and it's fun. And 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 it's informative. It's like, you know. That's what's good. You guys are putting out what you guys find and as factually as you can find it. And that's that's what we're all about, even on the network in general. All the shows are serious approaches to the subject matter, but we have a good time doing it. Hell yeah. Have you, you listened probably... to the next episode yet? No. <laughs> <Do> you have... <laughs> you have <it. laughs> now I'm worried. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. By the time this episode comes out, we'll be fired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My just next like, episode is dropping. Spotify. Yeah, right. Uh, all Sorry, right. I just got a new job doing audiobook narration. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um. And then yeah. So other than uh pointing out that yes, this is the man who who creates the titles for our videos. Um. You can point at him. That guy right there. <laughs> about all those titles he 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 digs deep for him sometimes i'll tell you what um but yep head on over to the paranormal network facebook page a uh, lot of stuff over there you guys have a ton of members and which is really really awesome uh and then when you're done with that head on over to the infinite rabbit hole facebook page we have fun over there too we post some pretty cool stuff uh we started posting pictures to go with uh episodes about a day or two before the episode drops that way you have all of the content that you need while you're listening. Uh, so when you're listening, you're asking, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about the Loch Ness monster. Like uh, Ken's are just did for us. You can go to the Facebook page and check out those pictures that we're talking about. Um, with red circles. Yeah. With red yeah. circles. We should have done that. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity. <You're> <laughs> oh. Should we talk about the, uh, the shutdown or just leave it? 
oh uh mm-hmm. no we we should we should announce that really quick um do you want me to go ahead and do that jake yeah all right uh just kind of making an announcement here this is not jason hewlett related this is all infinite rabbit hole uh if you guys want anything off of the merch shop you gotta do so before the first of the year because we are shutting her down okay uh we're the only ones that buy things (laughs) we're literally paying a membership to keep keep ourselves happy and that's that's pretty much it so uh if you guys are looking for some infinite rabbit hole merch check us out over at infinite rabbit hole.com click on the uh irh merch tab at the top and check out some of our swag uh jake put a lot of really hard work into making some of those t-shirts i know i just kind of i bought three of them because the decision was going to be made soon to do this um but we're going to come up with a new way of doing it something that's cheaper for us uh so hang tight all right jason once again thanks man really do appreciate it uh everybody want to say their last words to jason before we let him go thanks jason Classic. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Thanks, I get man. to brag that I got to talk to a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Canadian. <laughs> I've told people that I know who, about you, and none of them are interested in any of this stuff. And they're just like, <laughs> okay. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Well, I think I've had two people recognize <laughs> his name when I mention him. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. I've had a few. But, but you few. know, we appreciate it. And for those that are involved in like this, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, niche, I guess. This yeah, like, you know, niche. it's like, it, it is a big deal. And we think it's a big deal. You're too. a and cool we, guy. And we well, appreciate you, you coming on here and, and chatting with us and, and having us on your network. That's pretty sick. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. We love it here. So don't fire us. No. Yeah. Unless you really have to. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. That has been another episode of the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. Uh, check us out on infiniterabbithole.com. Uh, if you need to email us, infiniterabbithole at gmail.com. Head on over to Facebook. Check out the Infinite Rabbit Hole and Paranormal Network Facebook pages. Things are popping over there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, at the Paranormal Network, there's tons of stuff. The Infinite Rabbit Hole, we, we do every once in a while. We'll, we love having you guys over. Um, until next time. We'll see you in the next path of the infinite rabbit hole. Bye. 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 There it is. (laughs) Look at on cue.